fullness of God is that somebody, somebody, come on somebody, is who's trying to get over to you, trying to attack you, trying to destroy you. God will block it every time. God will lift up a hedge and lift up a wall and make it where nobody can get to you, make it where nobody can destroy you. And then what he'll do is he'll have us look back on those lessons and he'll say, where was the blessing? What did you learn from it? What did you gain from it? How did you get stronger? How did you get wiser? How did you get bigger? Come on, how, what did you learn? Did you make the same mistake twice? God will teach you over and over and over again the blessings that are in our lessons. Thank God for my lessons. Thank God for my lessons. Thank God for my lessons. Today is the day that we're going to absolutely worship our God and give him praise and show him that we're grateful for everything he has taught us, everything he has brought us through. And so today, as we get ready for the word, I want you to write down what was one of the biggest blessings in a lesson you learned. What was one of the biggest blessings in a lesson you gained? What was one of the biggest blessings in a lesson you grew stronger because of, you grew bigger because of, you turned your life around because of, God showed you something brought you through something it was fire it was hell it was sickness it was grief it was loss it was despair it was heartbreak and heartache it was betrayal it was denial it was abandonment but when you came through it what God said is there's a blessing in that lesson when you got fired what did you learn when you got cheated on what did you learn come on when mama went home the glory and daddy went home the glory what did you learn what was the biggest blessing and the biggest lesson that you ever learned come on that's what we looking back on this morning. Invite somebody today that needs to hear this word. Somebody needs to say, that's what I got out of being addicted. That's what I learned when I went through rehab. That's what God taught me through his word. When I was in the fire, when I was in the flood, when I was in the lion's den, when I was going through my own Red Sea, when I found the lump and had to go through the chemo, when I had to take the pills and the medicine, when I had to endure the shots and my sight began to fail, when I couldn't hear as well as I could hear, when my hearing was not as sharp and my vision was not as sharp as it was when my children began to act crazy when my first marriage fell apart come on somebody when I lost the baby and had the abortion come on when I found the number and caught the disease come on somebody God is talking to you this morning what did you learn through all of that what did you gain through all of that what did he put in your hands and what did he put in your heart how did he renew your mind and how did he transform your life what was the biggest blessing and the biggest lesson you ever learned. That's what we're going to God to say thank you for this morning. Before we get in the word, before we climb in his presence, we looking at the blessing in the lesson. We're looking at the blessing in the lessons. Come on, somebody. What did he break off of you? What did he pull you out of? What did he pull you over? Come on, somebody. What did he pull out of you? There's been some blessings. There's been some blessings and some lessons. There's been some lessons in your life. Come on, somebody. Let's go on ahead and talk to our father. Father, how we love you. Father, how we adore you. How we just magnify your name on this Friday morning. God, we so grateful to have made it through this week. This week, God was hard. This week right here was tough, God. This week right here was rough, God. But you brought us out, God. You brought us through, God. You shielded us and you picked us up, God. You made sure that our feet didn't dash a stone, God. You've been a rock in a weary land. Somebody had a weary week this week but we came here right now on a Friday morning to say thank you father to say we thank you for our post we thank you for our heartbeat we thank you for the regulation of our pressure God we thank you that diabetes hasn't taken us out we thank you God that our mind did not break in half the enemy put it on our mind he put it on our shoulders he put it on our back but God you made us strong through it you made us strong despite it God what we found out the phone calls we got the texts we got the people who went off on us the bad news we got we survived it all this week God to the glory glory of your good name to the glory of your good name God and now we don't just look back on this week we look back on our life we look back on our month we look back on our year we look back on our journey and we say there have been some lessons there have been some blessings and so God we about to start writing them down we start to start learning from them we about to start drawing close to you through them God what have you taught us what have you given to us what have you deposited in us God how have you taught our hands to war have you have you taught our mind to think how have you taught our heart 
to repair. God, we love you this morning. We thank you right now, Holy Father, for each and every one of your children that's going to come here this morning and say, my God did it. My God, the one that brought me up. My God, the one that brought me out. My God, the one that brought me around. My God is the one that held me. My God is the one that rocked me. My God is the one that delivered me. My God is the one that healed me. Come on, is there anybody that's been healed? Is there anybody that's been picked up? Is there anybody that's been restored? Anybody got your hope back, got your endurance back, got your strength back? Come on, anybody got a good mind, a right mind to praise God this morning? I dare you to share this video so somebody else comes in and say, thank you, God. So somebody else comes in and say, I love you, God. So somebody comes in and say, I surrender to you, God. Come on, we got to be used by God to reach the masses. So I dare you to help me. Help me get this word, word all around the world to every broken heart, to every hurting heart. Come on, I dare you right now. Post it on your page. Invite somebody to it because God is about to speak. God is about to bring in. God is about to push out. God is about to pull up. God is about to clarify. Who needs some clarity today? Ain't nothing like coming to the word of God first thing in the morning to set our day aright, to set our day strong. He is worthy, worthy, so worthy of the praise. He's worthy to be trusted, worthy to be listened to, worthy to be held on to, worthy to walk with, worthy to talk with. Come on, somebody. I dare you right now to say, God, I need you. My money is good. My business is good. All of that stuff is good, but ain't nothing like God. God, I don't want to gain the whole world and lose my soul. I want to know I have you. I want to know you have me. I want to know that when I get in trouble, you are there. When I get on the mountaintop, you are there. When I'm down in the valley, you are there. If I'm in the doctor's office, I see you hooked up to the breathing machine. You are there, God. So God, while we're here, while we're listening to you, God, we've decided to give you every situation, God. I give you my brother. I give you my dad. I give you my mother. I give you my children. I give you my marriage. I give you my hands. I give you my heart. I give you my lumps, God. I give you my bumps, God. I give you my bruises and my wounds, God. I give you my blackness, God. I give you my darkness, God. I give you my hurt, God. I give you the stuff that tried to kill me, God. I give it to you right now by the name of the Jesus that died for me and proved to me that he loved me. Because God, I'm not going to keep carrying this stuff that's trying to break me, that's trying to weigh me down till I can't move. I came here to praise you. I came here to give you glory. I came here to worship you this morning. So speak, Lord. Speak, Lord, because you've been good Good to me and your goodness to me yesterday proved to me how good you gonna be today I give you glory honor and power on this morning in the name of our Savior we do pray amen amen and bless his holy faithful strong right here all the time name I'm telling you when I look back over my life and all that he's done for me I look back over my life and all he's brought me through I look back at just getting another day somebody just told me the other day that they weren't going to celebrate getting older and I said to them when you say I don't want nobody to know how old I am when you say, I don't want anybody to know it's my birthday, you're telling God that you're not grateful for another year. Let me tell you, I'm 47. Thank you, Jesus, for all 47 of those years. Thank you, God, knocking on the door of 48, going to be at 50 in a minute. But right now, I celebrate 47. I ain't worried about what nobody think about how old I am because you can't please everybody. To somebody, they're going to go, oh, she's too young. And to somebody else, they're going to say, oh, she's too old. But to God, he's going to say, she's just right. She's just right. She's wonderfully and perfectly made because I knitted her. I knitted her in her mother's womb and made her who I wanted her to be. And I praise him that I'm here by the mission and the commission of the Holy Spirit to do the work of the Father. I thank him this morning. Is there anybody else that just celebrates your life? Celebrate another day's journey, another year of life given to you by God. You ought to just say thank you. You ought to just say hallelujah to your name, God. I dare you to invite your children this morning. Come on, go on and invite your children. Maybe if you invite your children, their little wicked lost friends, or see it on their page, and then somebody like that, you need your children's friends saved. Come on, somebody. I dare you to watch your, invite your wife's friends and your husband's friends because the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. So you know what? I want my husband to have iron around around him. I want my kids to have iron around him. I celebrate when I say I celebrate God today. I celebrate God. I got so much 
good and bad, crazy and peaceful going on in my life. And, and, and the, the struggle is to be in balance, not get too high with the highs and don't get too low with the lows. I want to um, thank everybody that's been praying for my brother. I just want you to continue to cover him and his family and his health. My father is in the hospital, went to the hospital last night. And so I'm asking everybody to now cover my father. I told y'all the enemy is trying it, but he gets no victory with me because what I do with that pain, what I do with that worry, I give it to God and I keep it moving and I keep it pushing. I trust my God and why I got family members on the east coast that are going through my daughter is headed to iceland today bless the lord oh my soul my daughter is going to study abroad um, during her spring break and why everybody else is going to Florida and going to Vegas and doing all of my sweet wonderful baby is leaving the University of Michigan campus today with a group going to Iceland so I want you all to pray for her traveling grace and her traveling mercy her keeping I love the fact that my children get to see the world I never went out of the country until I was good and grown and so I love it when children begin to explore the globe and see that the world is bigger than the one little town village or hamlet that they were brought up in because when they can see the whole world they can have a world view and when they can have a world view they'll say he has the whole world in his hands seeing the whole world just helps somebody else see i gotta trust god because it's a big old world and in all these people in the world he's mindful of little old me oh yes he is yes he is yes he is come on and share the video for me come on and share the video with me come on i want somebody in your life to get this word today because god brought us a profound word and you know we've been doing this devotion for 10 years now and in 10 years we have over uh 2100 messages that have been recorded now we didn't start recording until we were in our third year so the first two years the first 600 messages never got recorded but now we are into 2100 messages recorded and in 2100 messages i have never done one message 22,100 messages i have never done a message about what today's message is about that's why i love the fact that the word of god is so alive it is alive which means you can never say i exhausted it you can never say i got everything out of it keep reading keep studying keep listening to the voice of god god will show you great and mighty things you do not know he will begin to continue to open up here's a new way to think about this here's a new way to answer that here's a new way to heal from this and so today he give he's given us a word from Habakkuk chapter 2 Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 and it says the Lord answered me and said write the vision make it plain on tablets so that he may run who reads it he says write the vision and make it plain on tablets so that he may run who reads it now um, our devotion coming from that chapter 2 verse 2 of Habakkuk is write it down write it down write it down now this particular scripture is talking about the vision it is talking about um, what God will give you he wants you know that's how the whole Bible came to us because men were led by God men did not write of their own will and their own desire the Holy Spirit led them told them what to write and they were moved by the Holy Spirit to give us the Word of God all through the Word of God he was telling people write it down write it down write it down when he brought John the revelator in the book of revelations he said what I'm about to show you write it down well I declare to you today that more than just the vision you and I have experiences you and I have downs and lows and valleys and, and, and mountaintop experience. We've been through relationship stuff. We've been through so many floods and so many fires that we need to write it down. We need to write how we were overcome, but we also need to write how we overcame. We need to write down what helped us and what hurt us. We need to write down what broke us and what brought us. We need to write down who left us and who stayed, who was faithful, who was right or die, and who absolutely, I never need to trust that kind of person again. What were the great relationships and what were the rotten to the core relationships? Who were the dogs? Jesus, don't let me run into another dog or a cat like that. And who were the great mighty men and women that God brought to help us along the way? Write it down. I don't know who this is for, but one of the issues that we have today in the body of Christ is not enough people journal. 
not enough people journal. I know as kids, you know, we used to keep our little diaries and some of us were violated by parents and we said, I'll never write down all my thoughts and, and all my visions and all my dreams ever again. My mama read my diary, my friends read my diary, but come on now, you a grown man now, you a grown woman, pick up a journal. You, you wanna call it a diary, call it a diary, but pick up a journal. I don't care if you type it, I don't care if you have paper and pen, but begin to write it down. What have you been through? What have you survived? Journaling is an effective way to manage stress. Whenever we who are counseling people are helping them to overcome being raped, being molested, you know, going through abandonment, being given up for adoption, going through grief, going through divorce, coming out of an addiction, we always tell them, start to journal, start to journal. And God just laid it on my heart last night. He said, tell the people of God, I need all of y'all. You may not be coming out of something big and massive, but maybe you already came out, but you never wrote it down. You never wrote down what your fears were. You never wrote down what your helps were. You never wrote down how you came out. God wants somebody to begin to journal. Journaling involves a practice of keeping the journal to explore your thoughts and your feelings surrounding the events of your life. What were your thoughts and what were your feelings? And I mean, go back, go way back, go back to your first memory and write it down. I had a young lady yesterday that I was telling her, I said, I want you to write down in your journal one page just about you and your daddy. How did he hurt you? How did he help you? What did he do to you? How did you feel about what he did? What what other wounds do you carry? How have you carried this through your life? How has it hurt you in the way of the relationships you choose today? I was explaining to her that the relationship that we have with our father, the one we have or the lack of one, it impacts the men that we choose today. Yes, it does. Come on, men, the same thing for you. The relationship with your father and your mother, it impacts the woman you choose. What do we need to do with that? write it down. Am I choosing somebody just like my rotten daddy? Am I choosing somebody just like my great daddy? Am I choosing somebody just like my faithful mama? Or am I choosing somebody messy like my mama? Write down your thoughts, your feelings, and your lessons around everything that you've been through. Write it down. Stop saying, oh, I'm going to remember it. No, you don't. We get old and this mind of ours, let me tell you something. Stop thinking that mind don't break until you get gray hair. That mind start breaking in the 30s. That mind start breaking in the 20s. Come on, some of y'all know you can go in a room and say, I'm about to head in there to get this. And when you get in the room, you can't even remember what you came in the room for. Some of us can't keep track of our keys. Some of us don't know where we put our toothbrush. Come on, somebody. So how are you going to remember what happened at 16? What happened at 17? How are you going to remember how you came out of the fire? How are you going to remember what happened when you got ill? How are you going to remember how you processed the death of your parent? How are you going to remember what was working and what wasn't working? Write it down. Write it down. Our scripture says, write the vision. Make it plain on tablets. Stop thinking you're just going to keep a mental journal. Stop thinking you just going to keep a verbal journal. Write it down. Listen to this. Self-exploration is one of the tools that we hope that people get out of journaling. It, it works best when it's done consistently or even occasion. You can sporadic journaling. It works, but it's really effective when we do it all the time, when we do it all the time. And so don't be worried about, I missed a week or I missed it. Just keep going, keep going, just write. Sometimes my journal writing has months in between and sometimes even years, but I just feel myself being brought back to writing. Even when I look at the sermons that I write, sometimes I look at the sermons and I can't believe I wrote that. I can't believe I thought like that. You know, 10 years of writing these devotions, 10 years of writing these sermons. I'm telling y'all, even now, I listened to the recordings and said, that girl was preaching that thing. Somebody ought to just pray for her because that, but I don't even remember it. What's the blessing? Write it down. Write it down. Listen, as a self-exploration tool, you want to write down what your mistakes were, what your successes were, the people you encountered, the times you had, the events you lived through. Write down what you felt and what you feared. Write down who stayed and who left you. Write down your ideals, your creativity, your dreams, and your plan. Write down what your relationship patterns. Are you a horrible picker? Do you remember that season when your picker was broken? You kept picking idiot after idiot? Write it down. Why? Because
because maybe you can take your daughter back. Maybe you can take your son back. Maybe you can take yourself back and say, look at how I felt when I was 21. Look at how I felt when I was 24. Look at the mistakes. Look at how I had babies by four different people, but I stopped it right there. Come on, somebody. Maybe you got a Leah kind of story where you kept having babies by one man, one man, one man. He going to love me. He going to love me. This baby going to make him love me. This baby. And then finally you say, you know what? I'm going to have me a Judah and I'm going to praise the Lord. Write down what you went through. Write down what you came through. Write down how you came through. Now what the world will say is it's a self-exploration too. But I declare to you right now that it's not just self-exploration. It's God exploration. One of the best things to do in journaling is talk to God. God, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm worried about. God, this is what troubles me. Pour it out. Stop keeping it in. That's why they said it relieves stress because it's a way to do what? It's a way to get it out. It's a way to get it out. I'm telling you right now, God is telling somebody, explore me in your journaling. When you begin to explore God, when I begin to explore God, guess what we begin to see? His goodness and his faithfulness. We begin to see where he rescued us. We begin to see the history. We begin to see his love and the endurance and the perseverance. We begin to see exactly what happened. We'll see where we were praying about this, 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 and this, and then we can go right down the list. Check, he did that. Check, he did that. Check, thank God, he never did that. I'm so glad he never answered this, 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 and this. Write it down so you can remember it, so you can grow with it, so you can run by it. Our key scripture said, write it down and make it plain on tablets. I don't care what kind of notebook. Keep it in your phone, keep it in your computer, keep it in your laptop, but have you some kind of tablet where you write it down and you can come back to it and you can grow thereby. Tell your children, your child being bullied, your child going through heartache and heartbreak, coming out of relationships, tell them start to journal. Start giving them some journals for birthday presents. Start giving them some journals just because somebody, you're going to go out and get you a whole bunch of journals from the dollar store today and pass them out to people and say, you need to pour all that pain that you always calling me about. You always texting me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit just told me to tell all of you chronic Facebook posters, all of you Instagram people, stop posting everything in a status update and put it in a journal. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Stop, stop putting everything in a status upgrade. You know what? I'm talking to this and this is what happened to me and it don't everybody don't need to know your private pain keep your private pain private in a journal don't give it to the whole world be in control of who you share it with everybody don't need to know your relationship in trouble because when you forgive him tomorrow you're gonna look like an idiot that you posted everything yesterday come on somebody stop posting stuff on social media about emotions you may not have next week help me holy ghost right there God, help our young people. How many young people I didn't told, this is a pause in the lesson right now. How many young people I didn't told, potential employers will explore your social media to see who you are. And if you don't want them to know that's who you are, that's how you think, that's how you talk, stop writing it down. God, help me. And for those of you in the church, don't you know that the leaders, that the pastor, that the bishops and the elders, we be looking at y'all Facebook pages like, Jesus, and you leading the choir? Jesus, and you over the ushers? Oh, my God, you one of my most faithful deacons, and you doing this, thinking like this, going through this? You don't know no better than that? Woo, Jesus. Don't write it down on social media. Write it down in a journal. Write it down in a diary. Write it down where it's private, where it's secure, and you share it with who you share it with. Understand that there's a generation that's going to need to know our story. There's a generation that is going to need to know our story. Listen at Psalm 102. It says, let this be recorded for a generation to come so that people yet to be created may praise the Lord. What if all of the stuff you've been through helps your children's children's children? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. What if you don't want nobody to know it now, but you know what? Here, take my stuff and learn of it after y'all put me in a casket. After y'all write the obituaries, look, I want y'all to see where I was stupid, where I was foul, where I slept with a married man, where I slept with a woman, where I was addicted to pornography, where cocaine had my mind. I want y'all to see where I couldn't hold down a job. I want you to see where I felt like 
like a failure. I want you to see my successes. I, I want you to see the things I did great, and I want you to see the things I did small. I want you to learn from my stuff. This is where I got bust up the side the head, and this is where I bust somebody upside the head. These were my mistakes and my, my failures. I want to write for a generation yet to come. Jesus, help me, God. There are so many benefits to that. When they see that, oh, my God, Grandma made these same mistakes, and Auntie made these same mistakes, and my daddy, he used to think like he used to be afraid just like me. I feel normal now. I don't feel so isolated and, 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 and by myself now because now I can learn from what my mama went through, learn from what my sister did. Somebody say, write it down write it down that's why i played that song for you this morning that there's a blessing in your lesson there's a blessing in your lesson we have to go back to the lesson so we can see the blessings we have to go back to the lesson so we can see the blessings some of the benefits from uh journaling that come is personal growth because it helps us understand life experience it helps us take a bird's eye view of how we handle different experiences you know what did you handle real well and Jesus, what was you an absolute idiot about? Come on, somebody. How many of you know you learn more from your mistakes than you even do your successes? Jesus, how many of you know failure is one of the best teachers of life there is? I remember Michael Jordan used to say all the time, I failed my way to the top. He said it was all the shots that I missed that taught me how to make them. You better write down all the shots that you missed, somebody. Don't just write down your slam dunks. Don't just write about your championships. Write about when you lost and write about what you learned from what you lost. Write about what it felt like to be a loser and write about what it felt like to be a winner. But write it down. Personal growth. When you begin to explore all the aspects of your life, spiritually, career-wise, when you were in school, when you chose the wrong degree, you studied the wrong field of, of expertise for two years before you changed directions, you lived in the wrong city too long, you were afraid to move, you were afraid to get married, you were afraid to have a baby, you felt guilty over the abortion, you couldn't come out of the addiction, write it down. There is power in writing it down and making it plain. Maybe when you read it, you can run by it. Jesus, I so wish that, I, now those of you who've been with this ministry a long time know I had a flood. And in the flood, I lost a lot of stuff. And one of the things I lost was a lot of journals. And in preparing this message, God said, go back and write what you remember. You may not have word for word, but there's some stuff in your 47-year-old mind that's not going to be in your 52-year-old mind, not going to be in your 57-year-old mind or your 67. Write it down so you can learn from it. So if you're broken tomorrow, excuse me, when you're broken tomorrow, if you're scared, no, when you're scared, when you're lost and when you're in despair in the tomorrows of your life, you will go back and say, man, I'm glad I wrote this vision and made it plain because I'm about to run on this thing today. I dare you to say I'm going to grow personally. I told you already it reduces stress. It reduces stress. It has been proven that there is healing in journaling. The psychological community has shown that emotional, physical, and psychological benefits come from people actually writing stuff down. It says it improves your cognitive function, your immune system, preventing a host of illnesses. It counteracts the negative effects of stress. They're saying that literally your physical body will get better. I may not have a friend I can pour it out to. I may not have a trusted confidant, but if I can get the stress, the worry, the pain, the anxiety out of me, then it helps my body. It helps my mind. It helps my pressure. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, write it down. It also also helps us with problems problem solving write down the pros and cons that you face and it can help you in finding a solution get a point of view that you know how do I think about it this way what is the advice I gotta write it down write it down and it enhances your intuition Yo, that's, that's what the Bible says, your discernment. Come on, somebody. You begin to discern things differently when you look back at what you've been through, when you look at all that God brought you through. And I'm going to tell you, I told you, it's not just for self-examination and self-exploration, but it is primary for God exploration. You will trust God more when you see all that God has done. 
you will trust God more when you see how sovereign and wise he is. That's why I told you in the beginning, if you don't write down just the, the prayers he answered, but write down the prayers he didn't answer and how much that was the best blessing of your life. He never let that relationship work. He never let you get that job. He never opened that door. Write down every closed door because there's some lessons. There's some lessons. There's some blessings. There's some greatness. There's some power from every closed door you ever had in your life. Every single person he ever pulled from you, cut from you, there have been some lessons in it. Write it down. Pass it to yourself and pass it to the next generation. And so I'm going to encourage you and I'm going to charge you today. I want you to write a day just about your relationship with your dad, what it was and what it wasn't what was great about it and what hurt about it. I want you to write down a day just about you and your mom. What was great about it? What mistakes did she make? make? And then I want you to write down why you think she made those mistakes. Was she a molested? Was she raped? Was she abused? Come on, somebody. Because when you're raised by an addicted parent, when you're raised by an abused parent, when you're raised by a parent that was never esteemed, was never held high, never got an education, when you're raised by a parent that didn't know who they are, it affects the mistakes they make. Write down why. Don't just write down what they did wrong. Write down why you think it happened so you can see it, so you can explore it, so you can dissect it and grow from it. Write down about your relationships. I want you to write down all of the major relationships and what they taught you in your life. And if it's some minor ones, come on, somebody, write it down. Write what you learned. Write where you went left and write where you went right. Come on, somebody. Write how long it lasted. Write the flags that you ignored. I saw him with them black lips, but I didn't want to uh, admit that that meant addiction and, and that he was mm -mm -mm, a little bit too much. I, I, I knew that he drank, you know, every day. I didn't want to see that there was a problem with the fact that he had his own bottle, his own personal stash and his own little brown bag every day. I, I knew that he began to shove me and call me out my names, and I ignored the fact that that's what led to him jotting that eye and busting me in my chest. Write down the flags that you ignored. Come on, somebody. Write it down. You're going to help another generation. You're going to help another somebody. Your iron is going to sharpen somebody else's iron, and you're going to be able to go back to those lessons and say, this is what I learned. Write down the illnesses that you've had, the lumps that you found, the blood that you found. Write it down. Write down how you were in denial, and you tried to ignore it, and it just got worse. And by the time you went to the doctor, the doctor said you should have came. Write it down. I want you to write it down. You're going to learn from it. You're going to grow from it. You're going to expand from it. And you're going to trust God through it. And you're going to be able to teach and help and lift and love somebody else because of it. Journal it out. Journal what you're thinking. Journal what you're hoping for. Journal what God taught you today in his word. Journal what you learned today when you were sitting in traffic and sitting in the waiting room. Nothing is off limits. I just want you to write it down. There's a blessing. There is a blessing in your lesson. And I pray that just like God told us in the Bible to write it down and make it plain, I pray that you will write it down and make it plain. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, this is the first scripture I ever preached from. The first sermon I ever wrote came from this scripture right here. Verse 6 is through 9. It says, These words I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk to them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. He says these words, everything you've been through, everything. He said you're going to talk of them, you're going to walk with them when you lie down and when you rise up. He said you shall bind these words as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontless for your eyes and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house. He's talking about the word of God, the promises of God. But I declare to you right now, dear, sweet, holy father, that that's the same thing with journaling our lesson. What's been the blessing in your lesson? What's been the greatness of what you've been through, what you survived, what you came out? What were your fires? What were your floods? Come on, make a list of all the tigers and all the bears you've ever fought. Come on, somebody. Every single serpent, every snake you ever encountered, everyone that bit you, and everyone that you avoided. Come on, write down every trap you fell into and every trap you leaped over. Come on, write down every night you cried and write down every morning that weeping endured, but joy came in the morning. Write it down and make it plain. I dare you to answer the call and charge of God today to write it down. Write it down, write it down. You're going to feel better 
You're going to think better. You're going to remember better. You're going to teach better. Father God, thank you for this word. Thank you, God, that you are so faithful. You are so kind. You are consistent, God. You knew that somebody listening, somebody watching, you knew that they had been through some stuff, God, and that in the stuff they've been through, God, they would need to begin to write it down to bless somebody else, God. You knew right now, Holy Father, that somebody would need to see what the blessings in their lessons were. Somebody would need to look back over their 20s, look back over their teens, look back over who tried to break them, who tried to kill them. Somebody would need to write it down to say, look at what I came out, look at what I came over, look at what defeated me, look at what I defeated, look at my victories, Jesus, and look at my failures, look at my valley experiences, and look at my valley, my mountaintop experience, look at when the rain just would not quit raining, and look at when the sun was shining so brightly. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to write it down because when I'm about to break tomorrow, when I'm about to crack tomorrow, when I'm about to let go and give tomorrow, I want to go read my tablet. I want to go read my journal. I want to go read what I wrote plainly because maybe tomorrow it'll help me run. Maybe tomorrow it'll help me not give up. Maybe tomorrow it'll help me trust him. Maybe tomorrow it'll help me believe him. Maybe tomorrow I'll remember this ain't the worst day of my marriage. Maybe tomorrow I'll remember my first child did this too. Maybe tomorrow I'll remember I did this when I was 16 I thought like that in my first relationship maybe my child ain't crazy maybe my child just acting like me oh God let me write down what the blessing in my lesson has been oh God let me write it down let me write it down, God. Let me write it down, God. Let me write it down on how good you've been and how faithful you've been. Let me write it down, God, on how you showed up. Let me write it down, God, every Goliath you've ever killed, every furnace you ever brought me through, every Red Sea you ever parted, every time I ever walked on water, every time I ever touched the hem of your garment, every time you ever touched me and I was made whole, every demon you ever delivered me from, every demon you ever delivered me through, let me write it down, God. I want to write it down. I want to sing about it. I want to shout about it. I want to dance about it. I want to praise about it. I want to write down every migraine, every lump, every MS and leukemia story. I want to write down every cancer I thought I had. I want to write down the cancers my mama had and my daddy had. I want to write down what was wrong with them and what was right about them and why it happened and what I gleaned from it, God. Let me write it down, Father. You've been faithful to me. And I just want to remind myself when I'm feeling weak and when I'm feeling worn out, when I'm feeling weary, God, I want to go back and read. You've always been there. You've always been there. You've always been there. You've always been there. Jesus, there's been a blessing in my lesson. There's been a blessing in every lesson you have taught me. And today I give you glory and honor and praise of how this is going to help me in the tomorrows of my life. This is going to help my children and my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. God, this is going to help me keep my mouth shut in my marriage. This is going to help me not quit my job. This is going to help me to quit my job. This is going to help me know what degree I should pursue. This is going to help me put the pain out of me and away from me. This is going to help me break the chain. Help me right now, Holy Father, to write it down. Jesus, 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 help me, Father. I believe you, I love you, and I trust you, God. Now, I just hope and pray, God, that the one that you wanted to hear this word today, the one that you wanted to take this charge up today, I hope we just don't talk about it and feel about it. I hope people go get journals, buy journals. I hope people start typing in their phone, put a lock and a code on it so can't nobody get into it. But, God, I believe somebody about to write it down. And when we write it down and we see what we came through, God, we going to shout it over. Don't those lessons, we're going to praise you about it. Those lessons, we're going to dance about it. Those blessings, we're going to say hallelujah about it. Those engagements that we called off. Those relationships that we walked away from. Those bags that we packed. Those doors that we shut, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for telling us today to write it down, God. Thank you for telling us how we built the business. Thank you for telling us, God, how we came out of fear. Thank you, God. Hallelujah to your great and holy and excellent and strong name, God. You've been good and faithful to me, and I declare to you right now, I'm going to write down the blessings that are in my lessons. Jesus, bless his name this morning. How many of you know he's always been there? Even when you only saw one set of footprints, he was carrying you right down the times he carried you compared to the times where you had the strength to walk on your own. 
Come on, write down so you can be a help to the next generation. I love you, favor of God, family. I thank God for this word. I thank him that he always gives us different words to grow us and stretch us every day, every day, bringing us to a word that helps us, to a word that absolutely increases us. Come on, I dare you to write. If you don't write every day, write every two days. You don't write every two days, write every week. You don't write every week, write what happened for the month. Just start. Don't worry about your grammar. Don't worry about your spelling. Come on, somebody. This is for you and you only. You won't spell check, then type it out. Let your spell check help you out. But just get it out of you. Pour it out of you. And I promise you, you're actually going to become a better writer. You're actually going to expand your vocabulary. You're actually going to learn a little bit more. The more you write, the better your mind gets. Believe that and know that. The Bible says we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. I dare you to write down the renewal of your mind and what you learn from it. I'm excited about this coming week, Living Legend Sunday at the Hope on Sunday at 2 o'clock in Inglewood, California. Join us. Join us. We're excited about all the people that will be honored, all of you who have chosen to come out and give a Living Legend Award. These aren't people we chose. We allow you to choose them, everybody in the California area. We told everybody, you want to give a Living Legend to your mama, your daddy, your husband, your wife? We said, just contact us. We'll get an award ready for them, put their name on it, and you'll be able to get a minute to tell what makes them such a great influence and impact on your life. Tell us about the hungry that they fed and the people that they helped. Tell us how they went to prisons and, and visited people. Tell us about the children that they helped. Tell us how they put people in their home and nursed them all the way till they went home to glory. I'm telling you, I'm excited about this being our Black History celebration. We're wearing our African uh, apparel. If you want to, you can come in jeans and a t-shirt. We don't care. Two o'clock this Sunday at the Hope Church on Crenshaw and 88. 8722 Crenshaw in the great city of Inglewood. I'm excited about that. If this ministry keeps blessing you, I encourage you, support the ministry. Sow a seed that helps us to stay here all the days that we are here. Sow a seed that helps us to grow here all the days that we are here. Sow a seed that absolutely, absolutely will help us keep saving souls, changing lives, restoring hopes, bringing families together, holding marriages together, and bringing back mamas and daddies, daughters and sons, everybody back together. Because I believe we are doing a powerful life-changing work for our Father here in this work. And so I bless him and I thank him for it. I want you to have an incredible week. I want you to have an amazing week. By the way, we got our new cards in. Those of you who want our new cards, these are our little cards that give. It tells people that we're on Facebook. In the inside, on the front, it tells them exactly about the call and the number and all of that. And it tells them who I am and all that good stuff. And then on the back of the card is the church. You see that? So these are our little cards that anybody can give out. So if you want some cards, make sure when you come to the Hope that you get some cards. If you're out of state and you want some cards, just write us. We'll send you a handful of cards so you can tell people about this devotion. So when you meet somebody in the store, you meet somebody, you know, in the cleaners, you meet somebody out and about, you talking to somebody, say, you know what? You need to watch this little ghetto girl from Detroit. God is using her. She is a foolish thing that he uses to confound the wise. And I'm telling you, she keep it real. We pray for her all the time because she ain't perfect. She far from it. But God's hand is on her life and he uses her. He's using her in a mighty way. So make sure that you call us and get some of our outreach cards. We're excited about the hand of God and all that he is doing. I love you. I love you with all the love of God. Have an amazing weekend. Don't forget, you can call in for Sunday school this Sunday morning or meet me back here on Monday, Monday, Monday. I'll be here bright and early with a new word. Uh, on Monday, we're going to be talking about the walking dead. We're going to be talking about the walking dead. I can't wait for this word because too many of us are the walking dead or we know some walking dead. So God is going to show up and give us a mighty word. Pray for me. Tomorrow, I am supposed to speak at the Fontana uh, Black History Expo. 5,000 people are supposed to attend. I don't know how many of that 5,000 will be there, but I've been honored with the privilege to speak tomorrow at this great program. I'm excited. I just want you to cover me. I just want you to pray with me and pray for me that somebody gets saved, somebody come running, somebody let go, somebody surrender, somebody fall in love with our Savior. Y'all know I don't go 
to tell nobody about black history. I go to tell everybody about God history. Come on, somebody. It's not just black history month for me. It's God history month for me. So in the midst of somebody coming to find out why we so black, I want to tell somebody why we should be so saved, why God is so good, why he black, white, purple, and brown. Come on, somebody. I need you to pray with me. I need you to cover me. I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't wait to go and serve my Lord and Savior on the mile. So I love you. So go write it down. I'll meet you here on Monday morning, bright and early. Share this video. Share this video. Share this video. Let it bless somebody all week long. I love you guys. And I'll see you on Monday or at the Hope on Sunday.